Hey guys, my name's Gabe. I'm so excited that you have chosen to join us online today. I believe you will be encouraged today as a result. If this is your first time joining us, I would like to give a special shout out to you. If you would, text the word FIRST to the number on the screen. We'd love to send you a gift card for coffee on us. Thanks again for joining us today. Excited for what God has in store. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris Heifel. I'm lead pastor here at Grace River Church, and I want to say thank you so much for watching online at home. Today we start a brand new sermon series, and I'll be honest, man, this sermon series may be the most important sermon series of our entire year. And so I want to say thank you so much for watching online at home. Today uh, we start this sermon series called Generations, uh, and we're talking about the future of our church. We're talking about the future people that we're going to reach, uh, the, the future people that are going to uh, one day meet, know, and follow Jesus and so, man, I, uh, I can't wait for this series. Thanks so much for watching online today. And my hope today is that you take a next step as you meet, know, and follow Jesus. And so, uh, again, thanks for watching today. I want you to know, man, uh, if you want to see what God ha wants to do in the future, you've got to start with what he's done in the past. So if we want to see what God's done, what God's going to do in the future, we've got to start with what he's done in the past. And man, what's amazing is we can look to the Bible uh, for answers for that. But you know, it's crazy. Over 2,000 years ago, uh, there was a man named Jesus uh, that died on the cross for our sins. Uh, he borrows a grave for three days, uh, kicks a hole in it, and uh, rolls the stone away, and, uh, and, and he lives today. And so, man, we celebrate that every single Sunday here at Grace River and really every day of our lives as we worship. Uh, but you know, it's wild is, is that uh, the church really uh, explodes after the resurrection. And the book of Acts uh, helps us to really record that. Uh, the, the gospel writer Luke uh, wrote uh, the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, we're able to see how the early church just exploded uh, and the vision they had uh, to see more people meet, know, and follow Jesus is the same vision that we have here at Grace River Church over 2,000 years later. And so, uh, and what, what we've seen God do in the past is really prologue to what he's going to do in the future. And so Shakespeare talks about that. And I think it's important that we look to the past and go, okay, what exactly is it that God has done, even just here at Grace River Church? And so many of you know our church started back in February of 2015. Uh, in an elementary school. And so I got a picture of that here today. And so uh, this is crazy, man. This was just the uh, launch Sunday. This is the very first Sunday of our church. And man, it was really encouraging. We were at this location for a little under a year, 11 months. And then we moved into the O'Fallon YMCA uh, the, 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 uh, the end of 2015, first part of 2016. And so uh, this is us in the YMCA. We were portable in both locations, in and out. We were there for five years, uh, and then we bought the building that we're in today. And so this is what the building looked like uh, before we got into it. And so kind of a beige, vanilla uh, kind of feel. And uh, this was a call center. Uh, and then the other part of it was a clinic for BJC Hospital. And so this is what the auditorium looked like uh, as a call center. Uh, and so this is after they moved all the cubicles out and all that stuff uh, for the call center. And this is what it looked like our very first Sunday. And so the room I'm standing in right now, our very first Sunday just kind of looked like this. And we were just so thrilled uh, to be able to have a place, to be able to have have a home. And then about a year later, we bought 1.59 acres uh, behind us. And so we bought this plot of land. Uh, we painted the building and kind of made everything look nice on the interior and the exterior. And we bought this for future growth. We knew that one day we would be running out of parking uh, and we would need uh, more parking. And so that leads us to where we're at today uh, with what we're calling our Generations Expansion Initiative. And so uh, we're going to be able to have a new kids entryway, which is awesome, designed just for families whenever they walk in. And so this is what the new lobby uh, in, in the kids area is going to look like with kids check in and all that. Here's where our current lobby is going to look like. And so we're going to be able to take the ceiling out and open things up a little bit more. Uh, and it's going to be great. We're going to be able to add 100 new seats to our auditorium. Uh, and we're also going to be able to add 130 new parking spaces, which is really awesome. If you've ever been here in person uh, and you catch us at the wrong time, man, sometimes it's really hard and difficult to find a parking spot. And our big thing is we don't want anybody driving away uh, because they're not able to be able to get a spot. And then, uh, and then we also can see uh, the expansion here with the auditorium. And so uh, we're going to be able to have 100 new seats. This is the new lobby. And we're going to be able to double the square footage in kids' ministry space. And so uh, these are exciting days at Grace River. And again, if you want to know the future, 
we got to be able to look to the past. And uh, you may wonder, how are we going to get all of this done? Uh, financially, uh, it's the only barrier. So we got three big barriers in our church and one big solution, okay? So three barriers of this. Uh, one barrier is we're running out of auditorium space. If you've ever been here on a Sunday morning, man, things are crazy. And, uh, you know, we, we really need more auditorium space. We're running out of parking space. Uh, we're parking people at Cheer St. Louis. We're parking people in the grass. We need more space in the parking lot. And then we need more kids space, man. We're getting close uh, to being able to have to turn families away uh, because we don't have space in our kids' ministry classrooms. And our big thing is we want generations of boys and girls, generations of men and women to meet, know, and follow Jesus in this place. Uh, and that's what's next for our church, the next big step that we all have to take. And so uh, I, I want you uh, to consider what you could do. And so, uh, you know, I really want you to dream about this with me. And all vision is, is a dream with a deadline. So I want you to dream about what could be. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share a story later uh, in this talk of life change. And I think it's really important that every one of us understand that, that man, we have a big job to do. Uh, and would you dream with me about the people that don't know Jesus yet that are about to because we freed up some space so they can. Would you pray about it? Like some of you are like, man, I've just been waiting for this church to bring up money. Uh, I left my last church because of this or whatever. And I just want to say welcome. I'm really glad that you're listening. Uh, and my, my big encouragement to you is this, is that we're oftentimes resistant to give uh, because we think that all that we own is ours. And what I need you to understand is you are the owner of nothing but the manager of everything. And so instead of having a death grip on your stuff, would you pray? And man, we're going to see, I believe, through the next four weeks of this sermon series, we're going to see a revival like we've never seen in the life of our church as people loosen the grip of greed in their lives and become generous. Would you, would you listen to what God's saying to you? Uh, would you calculate what you could do? And here's the big thing. Would you add God? Add the faith element of going, okay, God has got, God has got this. God's going to take care of this. And so every one of you uh, that will come in person over the next four weeks will receive a decision card, a commitment card. And on that commitment card is just like a level of giving that you could give. Like it's just potential of what you could give. And I've got it on the screen here, what you could do. But like man, maybe you would say, I can give $1,200 a year to this, right? Which would be amazing. Uh, and we, we all look at a card like this or a screen like this and go, okay, this is what I could do. Uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to add God into the mix of this. And, and level up one level and say, okay, I'm going to trust God. Like Sarah and I, we're giving to this. Um, and we just boldly pray that we would be able to give more to this project than we've ever been able to give to anything else. And I'm, I'm praying that same prayer for you. Like I'm not giving anybody an amount they should give, but I am saying, would you pray about giving more to this initiative than you've ever given to anything in your life? And so and here, here's the, the whole thing behind the book of Acts and the whole thing behind generosity, and the whole thing behind our next step of faith as a church. Every step of growth happens from faith, not feelings, right? Now, the way you feel can change, right? And that, but, but every step of growth that happens in someone's life, it happens as a result uh, of people saying, man, I, I'm not going to trust my feelings. Instead, I'm going to trust Jesus. And that really is faith. And so, the book of Acts is called the book of Acts because of the actions of the early church. Not the feelings of the early church, but the actions. That's why it's called the book of Acts. It's all about actions. And this church cared about people that didn't know Jesus yet. This church lived on what I call the solution side of every problem. And so let's look at some of the really cool opportunities this church had. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, this is, again, after the death of Jesus, after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples are turning the world upside down and spreading the message of Jesus. And in verse 41, those who believe that what Peter was saying, Peter was one of the disciples preaching, uh, they were baptized and they added to the church about 3,000 that day. 3,000 people received Jesus in one day and the church is added to. And so uh, this, this just goes to show you uh, that God never designed the church to be small. Look at this. 3,000 people were added to the church in one day. And then in Acts chapter 4, a couple chapters over, the people who heard the message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. This church was rapidly growing in Jerusalem. So they went from 3,000, uh, and we don't know if that was men or women, to 5,000, just the men, 5,000. And then in verse 14 of chapter 5, yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord crowds of both men and women. And so here's what we know. Like the truth is God cares about the crowd. God cares about the multitude. It's really clear. 
Uh, if you look at the reality that when we die, it's one of two places that we go. It's heaven or it's hell. And like for me, I have people ask me often, how big is Grace River going to get? And when you think about it, this started in my living room with five people and it's grown into what it is today. And the question often gets asked from some of my peers that are also pastors. They'll say, well, how big is big enough for Grace River? And I always tell them, you're actually asking the wrong question. The right question is this, is am I willing to see my friends that don't know Jesus live this entire life without him? And that's the right question. And the answer to that for me is no. Like I want every person within an earshot of Grace River Church uh, to, to be able to know the truth about Jesus and, and be able to respond to it. And so I, I want to look to the early church at how they did what they did. And we look at the growth they experienced. So how did they do it? How did they see all these people receiving Christ? How do they see all this growth happening? How were all these generations of men and women and boys and girls? I mean, from Jerusalem, this is where the early church starts. Man, without what happened in the book of Acts, we're not talking about this Jesus guy today. So how did this happen? And how were generations impacted then? And how can generations be impacted now? And so really, it's, it's, it's a couple quick things. The first thing is the presence of God. Like, ultimately, the reason why they see what they see in the early church was the presence of God. The Holy Spirit in, in these believers' lives, and Jesus talks about this. He commanded them, don't leave Jerusalem. He's talking to his disciples before he ascends to heaven. Don't leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift that he promised. And what that gift was, was the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you and I, if you know Jesus today, have the gift of the Holy Spirit, which just simply means this, that you have God dwelling inside of you so they had the presence of God and we have the presence of God. And man, that changes everything because it means that we're never alone. It means that I'm not empowered on my own, which actually leads us to the second thing they had is they had the power of God. Look at this in verse eight. But you'll receive power. This is Jesus talking. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So this word power uh, translated in the Greek, it just simply means dynamite. Like that is how explosive Jesus is in our lives. That's how explosive the power of the Holy Spirit is in our life. And that you and I have this same power that's happening in our lives right now today that is oftentimes untapped. Like we have our own strength and our own power, right? Uh, you know, my, my son is super into like a pre-energy workout drink right now. Like he thinks that's like what's going to make him supercharged and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger some, somehow, right? Uh, but it's just a lot of caffeine and some sugar uh, to, to help him press through a workout. Now, here's the thing. You and I have a lot more than just caffeine, right? Even as you're watching this right now, you may be drinking a cup of coffee or sipping on an energy drink or whatever. And here's the thing. That power eventually runs out. What's amazing about the power of God is this. It never runs out. And so uh, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what's going on in your life, if you know Jesus, you have the power of God. I think that's, that's a really important thing to help you understand how they, how they did it is they had the presence of God, they had the power of God, uh, but they also had the participation, these are all P's, right? The participation of everyone. Acts chapter four, verse 32. All the believers were united in heart and mind. So they had a, they were all different, but they had one common mission, one common purpose. They were united in, in heart and mind and they felt that what they owned was not their own. This is really key. And if there's anything that could happen to you, my prayer for you throughout this sermon series would be this, is that you would loosen the grip on what you think you own. Because I said it earlier, man, you are the owner of nothing but the manager of everything. And so could you manage everything that God has given you to help point more people to meet, know, and follow Jesus? So how, so they, they, it, was, it was everybody. And here, here's what my encouragement is, even with this I'm in initiative, is that you know, we're trying to actually raise $1.2 million to do all the stuff that I talked about, to be able to make our auditorium bigger. I don't need a bigger room to preach in. I want to hear more. I want to see more people meet Jesus. So we, we need to add 100 seats in here. We need to add more parking. We don't want a bigger parking lot necessarily to plow snow on or anything like that or to sit empty. We're, we're building a bigger parking lot because we need the space because I don't want anybody ever driving away from here going, I, I would have went to church, but I couldn't find a spot. They won't hear about Jesus if they don't have a place to park in. And then I, we're getting ready to double the, uh, the square footage in kids' ministry space. And like I think about these kids that are hearing about Jesus, like, dude, this is so essential. We're raising up the next generation 
uh, of, of world changers that are going to meet, know, and follow Jesus and change the world from this place. And so, man, but to make all of that happen, it's going to require everybody doing something. So the number I told you earlier is 1.2 million, but my big number is 100%. I want to see 100% of everyone participating in this that call Grace River Church their home. If we can get 100%, we'll reach the 1.2 million. I'm not worried, even worried about it. But it's just everybody getting in the game, everybody doing something. And here's my, here's my encouragement to you. For some of you, it's time to get off the sidelines. Like, man, you've been delaying, you've been waiting to give back to God, and I want to encourage you, man, would you take the step of faith Make the commitment, make the decision, begin to pray about it and say, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust God when it comes to my finances. Because here's the thing, if we're going to see St. Charles County change, it's going to mean every single one of us doing something. And the fourth thing they had was prayer in Acts chapter 41, verse 31. After this, uh, after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Man, prayer was essential and prayer was important. And you know, over the years, we've prayed for life change. We've prayed that people, uh, that people would meet, know, and follow him. And what's amazing is that we've actually seen stories of dramatic life change. In fact, uh, one of the stories is Kayla and Alex. Uh, this is a couple that was invited to church by their cousin. And we actually prayed. We, we prayed for Alex uh, and we prayed for Kayla. Uh, what's amazing is we actually wrote Alex's name. When we built this stage that's behind me, we wrote Alex's name on the stage. Uh, and a few years later, Alex met Christ. I want you to check out their story. My name's Kayla. I'm Alex. And we're the Mises, and this is our story about life change. Growing up, I never had a religious background. Um, the closest thing to religion and God was grandparents that went to church, and you know they didn't really express it all that much. After we had our daughter, um, I struggled with postpartum depression and anxiety really bad. Um, and it was a really dark time in my life. I shut out pretty much everything um, and him. And um, I felt like I was struggling alone. Um, and then my cousin uh, urged me to go to just one small group, just give it a chance. I sat down with my little bitty baby and um, just listened. I didn't talk, I didn't say anything. I just listened to their stories and, and I just remember being in awe that they believed so much in this one person, this one God, that I wanted to learn more about that. And the next Sunday I was in, um, I was in church. I sat in the one of the back chairs, because I was one of those people that didn't want to sit in the front. Um, and I remember throughout the sermon, Chris had said, it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. And I think that statement made me change and want to say yes to meeting, knowing, and following Jesus. Um, and that's when my life changed. That next October uh, that they were rolling baptisms through, I said yes and I got baptized and that was the first time that Alex ever stepped foot in the Grace River. So yeah, I, I came to Grace River uh, to support Kayla getting baptized, um, but after that obviously I really wasn't planning on coming back. Uh, just church just wasn't for me. I didn't grow up in a religious home. Um, I mean, I mean they, my grandparents told me about God and Jesus, but it was kind of just left at that. After Kayla got baptized, like, she was always a happy person, but then, like, she just started, like, believing in, like, herself. Like, you could see her just, like, crawling out of the hole that she was in. And, I mean, me being, like, not a churchgoer, I was like, okay, there's something to this, but I just really couldn't figure out what it was. And then, like, she would just start randomly waking up on Sundays, hey, come with me today. Hey, come with me. I'm like, no, it's not for me. No, no, no. And then, like, she would just... She wouldn't ever pressure me into going. It was always her asking me, but like seeing the growth that she had, I was like, I've got to give this a shot. So I didn't really think church was for me because like growing up, I mean, like I said, there wasn't any like religion, like background in my house. And I just questioned like whether there was like a God at this point in my life. I hit rock bottom uh, personally, and it started affecting me, my household and people around me. And then I had to, I as I thought like, get out of it by myself. Um, so uh, Kayla asked me to go to church and then I met 
uh, Pastor Chris and Jacob at McAllister's and kind of just laid it all out there for him. And for that was literally the first time I had told anybody in my life about what I was going through besides Kayla. So like at that moment, I was vulnerable for like the first time in my adult life. And it, it, something just clicked at that point, like, hey, like kind of was just processing what was going on. And then I pulled up the Bible app and the verse of the day was everything to do with salvation. So at that point, like everybody's like, oh, God gave me a sign to do this. And like, it literally was like, here's your sign, just do it. I sat in my bedroom where I laid every night with the darkest thoughts of my life. And that's where I prayed. And that's where it all came full circle for me. And that's how I got out of it. The, our marriage is what's been impacted the most. Like there's patience, there's kindness. There's uh, understanding. There's understanding. Like, this is super cliche, but like, you pray at night for the things that your marriage struggled with that day. And like, that's something I would never do. And then I wake up almost like, obviously it's never fixed, but like there's. We still have our struggles and there's always gonna be that next argument, that next, um, you didn't do the dishes last night or you didn't, whatever. There's always gonna be that next argument or that next struggle but I feel like knowing that we don't have to. There's, there's the bitterness is gone, like because of, I think where we're at, like with the whole spiritual thing, like the bitterness has gone toward like, it, the, the words are softer whenever these things happen. It's just, it's weird how it all kind of like happened, but everything's just a little, a little better when it comes to our marriage and things like that. And it also changes our parenting too. Like just today, um, she was running out of service and jumps into Alex's arms and said, which, She's like, Daddy, I have Jesus in my heart. And I'm like, huh. And, you know, and three, just, four years ago, we probably would not have imagined her ever doing that. Or us ever walking and stepping foot in the Grace River or knowing and following Jesus and showing that through our daughter. Um, yeah, that's one of the biggest things is like, I mean, there's always somebody to talk to. And this is kind of like, I've thought about this a long time, but like, and there's nobody else to talk to. Like, I just want her to know that she can just look up to the heavens and just pray like to Jesus, to God. Like, like if I'm not there available or Kayla's not, like she has somebody to tell who or how she's feeling in that moment. And like, for me, like, that's the biggest thing, like with me and like, like to this day, like if I can't tell somebody how I feel because I don't want somebody to know it, like I can still get it out and there's still somebody listening and there's still somebody there for me. It's not so lonely anymore. Like she's never alone because if she has faith, like she'll never be alone. If she has faith, she'll never be alone. I want you to think about that for a moment. Here's a young couple, Kayla and Alex, who a few years ago weren't following Jesus and now they are. And now listen to this. Generations are gonna be changed because of one invite. And what's crazy is, is that her cousin has invited so many people to our church and we've seen so much life change from this family. It's unbelievable. Here, here's the big picture I need you to understand. It's not the cousin who's the hero, right? It's not the person that invites or the person that prays, it's Jesus. He's the hero of the story. And here, here's the harsh reality is that we need to see more stories. Who's next? Who's the next Kayla and Alex? Who's the next Collins, their daughter, who will, be, who will now be raised in a family where it's easy for her to meet Jesus, where Jesus lives in her heart, right? Uh, where she realizes that no matter what she's up against in life, She's never alone. And man, as a church, this is what we're going to be about. And generations of people, generations of families will be changed in this place as a result of what Jesus has done in our lives and our response in faith to what he's done. And here's the thing, God's going to do it. Don't you want to be in on it? You know, it's crazy because to get in this building, it took faith. It took people sacrificing. It took people praying. It took the presence of God. It took the power of God. It took everyone participating. It took prayer. And now here we are at this really important crossroads in the life of our church. What I believe actually is the most important season in the life of our church. And there's some next steps that I want you uh, to be praying about as you think about what your next step is uh, here at Grace River. The first one is this, would you decide I'm gonna count on God's presence? Like I'm, I'm not counting on, on, on my presence, right? I'm not counting on my abilities, I'm counting on God. Would you depend on the power of God every single day? 
that instead of depending on your strength and your ability and your own faith in yourself, instead, would you have faith in him? And would you do this? Would you commit to praying every day about what your commitment would be here? That every day you would go, okay, God, help me to understand what I need to do. Our big commitment Sunday on this initiative is happening on Sunday, December 3rd. And I would love for 100%, 100% of us to be participating in this in some way. And so would you pray about it? Uh, man, even if you can just give a little bit towards this, or maybe it's you giving a lot. And what I'm saying is this, is it's not equal gifts, it's equal sacrifice that will get this done. Every single one of us doing something. And here's why we're doing what we're doing. We're doing what we're doing because of Jesus because what we're doing here will matter not only in this life, but also in the next. I'm going to pray for you about what your next step is. Uh, and then uh, I want to say thank you so much for watching online today. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for my friends that watched online today. Help every single one of us to trust you more. I thank you for the story of Alex and Kayla and their daughter Collins. And God, I know that we're just getting started as a church. I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, I want to say thank you so much for watching online, at home. God bless you. You'll be praying about what your commitment may be. Uh, and again, commitment cards, December 3rd. Uh, you can also uh, submit commitment cards online on our website at graceriver.cc forward slash generations. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Hey, I hope that you were encouraged by what you heard today. Here at Grace River, we believe that it's important to give back to the God who gave us everything. If you feel inclined to give, I'd like to give you that opportunity right now. You can do so by texting Grace River to the number that's on the screen. And lastly, I would like to personally invite you to one of our three in-person services every Sunday at 8.30, 9.45, and 11 a.m. That's it for today. We hope to see you soon.